When planning an active restoration project, there are often many factors to take into consideration, among them depth to groundwater, soil conditions, and possible herbivory issues. This video briefly describes how to install a groundwater well, how to take a soil sample, and how to protect your newly planted shrubs and trees. Typical monitoring wells are comprised of a drive point, including a filter or screen, lengths of galvanized threaded steel pipe, couplers, and a drive cap. Simple wells can also be constructed from PVC pipe. Use an auger or a skid steer or mini excavator with a stinger attachment to bore out the hole for your well. Ideally, your auger or stinger is the width of the well you are proposing to install and a length appropriate for your conditions. Preferably have a well installed at a depth where you can maximize groundwater infiltration into the well. Insert pre-assembled lengths of the well into the hole and assure that they are well seated in the ground. It is important to have a monitoring well that sticks up at least one foot above the ground in case of flooding to reduce surface inundation. You may need to install an additional section of well to achieve this height. Be sure to tamp the well into place with available equipment. As you fill the space around your monitoring well, insert sand into the edges of the hole first, especially if surrounding soils are clay. Clay can clog the filter on the drive point and give you inaccurate readings. A baler is an instrument that can be inserted into a well to remove the first bit of dirty water and purge the filter that may have become soiled or clogged during installation. The baler should be used to remove water from the well until the well is dry or the water is clear. To test the depth to groundwater, a tape measure or water level meter, also known as an e-tape, can be used. Soil testing is an additional measure that can be taken to ensure restoration success. Many riparian plant species are sensitive to soil salinity, and many do best when pH values are within a specific range. Before beginning your soil test, it is important to calibrate your equipment per the manufacturer's instructions. To begin sampling, drill a deep sampling hole appropriate to the length of your stinger. Measure the depth to groundwater if groundwater is reached with a pre-measured sampling pole. Retrieve groundwater with a sampling pole cup and transfer to testing cup. If the bottom of the hole is inundated, but not watery enough to test as is, sample the bottom contents using a 2 to 1 ratio with distilled water. Using the soil meter, test the pit water for salinity and pH. Take a bottom depth sample just above the pit water depth by scraping the soil off the wall of the hole with the sampling cup and note the depth. Use this first sample for a texture test. You will also want to test for salinity and pH at this depth by measuring a small amount of soil, transferring to the mixing cup, and adding distilled water for a 1 to 1 ratio with soil. Mix contents until a paste consistency is reached. Repeat this process for a sample halfway up the hole and near the top of the hole between 0 and 6 inches. Between each sample, rinse the cup and meter with distilled water to prepare for the next level of testing. If parameters are within your desired range for a particular species, you can move forward with planting. If not, move on or pick a different species for this site. Caging is a step that is often overlooked with restoration plantings, but it can be especially important in areas with beaver, other wildlife, or grazing. A few simple items are needed for caging, including fencing materials, wire cutters, pliers, rebar, and flagging. When caging, it is important to give trees ample room to grow. For young cottonwood trees, five feet of wire from a four foot tall roll typically suffices. Cut the cage so that the wires on one end are free to wrap around the wire on the other end. With pliers, bend the cut side around the intact side to encircle the newly planted cottonwood pole with caging, leaving about one foot buffer around the pole. The same technique applies to other shrub species as well. Weave one three-foot rebar stake in between the squares of the wire caging for stability and use a single jackhammer to pound the rebar at least a foot and a half in the ground. Do the same with the second piece of rebar directly across from the first piece. Brightly flag the caging to help in relocation and maintenance. 